As we wrap up our discussion of demand curves, let's briefly take a look at three additional related concepts. The first is distinguishing between market demand and individual demand. The demand curves we've drawn here are for a single individual, namely you. But usually we talk about demand curves for an entire market and all the consumers in it. To go from individual demand curves to the overall market demand curve, we simply sum up the individual demands for each good at each price to give us the total demand of all consumers in the market. At a price of $5, individual 1 has a demand of 1, individual 2 has a demand of 1, and individual 3 has a demand of 1. So in our market of these three individuals, the market demand is 1 plus 1 plus 1 for a total of 3. At a price of $3, each of these three individuals has a demand of 2. So the market demand is 2 plus 2 plus 2, or 6, and so on for the other possible prices. Graphically, aggregating individual demand curves to market demand curves consists of summing the individual demand curves horizontally to produce the market demand curve. The second concept is often used when working with consumer demand, demand elasticity. Generally speaking, elasticity is a measure of the responsiveness of one variable to changes in another. So the price elasticity of demand is a measure of how much quantity demanded changes when the price changes. We can also refer to elasticity as sensitivity. Something that's more price sensitive, for example, we would call more price elastic. When we think about elasticities, we're always thinking about changes in percentage terms. When the price rises by some percent, by what percent does quantity demanded fall? Specifically, the price elasticity of demand is the ratio of the percent change in the quantity demanded to the percent change in price. Let's take the demand curve when cookies cost $1. When pizza slices are also $1, the demand is 8 slices. When the price of a slice jumps to $3, the demand drops to 2 slices. So demand has fallen from 8 to 2, a decrease of 75%. And the price has risen from 1 to 3, an increase of 200%. So the price elasticity of demand at this point on the demand curve is negative 75 divided by 200, or negative 0.375. Since the law of demand tells us that a rise in the price of a good leads to a drop in demand, the price elasticity of demand in strictly mathematical terms is always a negative number. However, it can be inconvenient to repeatedly write a minus sign. So economists tend to drop the minus sign and report the absolute value when talking about price elasticity of demand. That's true on the AP test as well. So in a price elasticity of demand of 0.375 means that for every 1% increase in price, demand falls by 0.375%. It's important to know that elasticities are local, not global. That is, in general, the elasticity changes as you move along the demand curve. When the price of pizza goes from $3 to $5, an increase of roughly 67%, demand falls from two slices to one slice, a decrease of 50%. The price elasticity of demand at this point on the demand curve is 50 divided by 67, or 0.75. At this point on the curve, for every 1% increase in price, demand falls by 0.75%. So you're more sensitive to price increases when the price of pizza is $3, and you're consuming two slices than when the price of pizza is $1 and you're consuming 8 slices. The third concept to keep in mind with demand curves is another type of elasticity, cross-price elasticity. Recall that the pizza demand curve we've been working with was for a price of cookies that was fixed at $1. Imagine instead the cookies cost $2 each. Then we get a different demand curve for pizza. And if cookies cost $3 each, we'd get yet another demand curve for pizza. So the demand curve for any good will depend on the prices of other goods since your underlying utility maximization is all about finding the best mix. And since the demand curve can change as the price of the other good changes, we say that there is a cross price elasticity. As the price of good B changes, it can affect for your demand for good A. In the next lecture, we'll take a look at the factors that make certain goods more or less sensitive to these various price changes.